since we can conduct a hypothesis test for the mean of matched pairs differences, then we can also construct a confidence interval for that same mean. Now, it never hurts to remind ourselves of the basic idea of a confidence interval, which is that you take a point estimate and you add and subtract your margin of error. Point estimate is the center of your interval. It's the foundation of your confidence interval. And then the margin of error is the give or take, if you will, that you need in order to create the confidence that you want, that the population value is there. So when you look at these formulas, you can see d bar is the center. It's the point estimate, which is why I wrote right here, d bar is the point estimate. And you add and subtract the margin of error, which is the whole back half of the formula. You can write it this way, but we tend to write it this way more often if we're writing it at all. All right. Um, never forget the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. We learned that in chapter 9, and it's still the case. All right, and we're not going to do these by hand. We're generally going to make stat crunch do the work for us with stat t stat paired. The same place we went for a hypothesis test, but it, we're going to be using it for a confidence interval. Also, don't forget that there's this new piece to our requirements. We had random, independent of the population, and normal before, but now we have this dependent sample bit, which is the two separate groups measured once, or excuse me, one separate group measured twice. My goodness, I just said it exactly wrong. One separate group measured twice, which is actually happening down below. All right. Um, Many of you are too young to remember, <laughs> but in 2008, there was a lot of controversy in that particular Olympics about the swimsuits that people were wearing and whether the swimsuits gave people an unfair advantage. Um, so they created new international rules that came into effect January 1st, 2010 regarding swimsuit coverage. And they had a study that tested whether wearing wetsuits influences swimming velocity. A random group of 12 competitive swimmers and triathletes swam 1,500 meters at a maximum speed twice each, once wearing a wetsuit and once wearing a regular bathing suit. The order of the trials was randomized each time the velocity in the meters per second of the swimmer was recorded. All right, so this is obviously a dependent sample. Sorry, I already had to make this video once. So this is a dependent sample with one group of swimmers that's measured twice. Right, one group measured twice with uh, with the wetsuit and without the wetsuit. That's classic, classic uh, matched pairs. Now, up here, I tell you that I want wetsuit minus no wetsuit. And the reason I'm doing that is so that you'll know which is sample one for our purposes. Right? Sample one, because this is really only one big group. I think in the previous video I said group one, but I really meant sample one. All right, so we're going to go have... StatCrunch help us with this, right? StatCrunch will do the heavy lifting. So let me show you how I'm going to there. So stat, t stat, paired. Now it's telling me that sample one is the wetsuit group and sample two is the no wetsuit group. And I'm going to be smart about this. I'm going to save my differences. And while I'm on the subject, I could run a hypothesis test that's meaningless because I haven't set up a hypothesis test. But why don't I look ahead? This is a confidence interval question, and they're asking me in part D to construct a confidence interval. So I could just do that instead, right? I can run the confidence interval at the same time that I find the differences and kill two birds with one stone, right? So I'm going to click down here for confidence interval, and I say find me the 95% confidence interval because that's the percentage we want for part D. And then I say compute. All right, whoops, and I'm, I'm in there. <laughs> it's rounding. So you can see, if I click on one of these values, it, it did a little weird thing there. But it, if I click away, it has a nice and beautiful with no decimals in it. Oh, excuse me, with no extra decimals in it. So I can see all my values right there. So I can see the values that I want to write down on my sheet as my differences. They're all been found for me, which is nice. So I'm going to write these down, and then we'll flip to the other page. All right, I wrote them all down. There they are. So part B is done. Now I didn't ask for it, but I probably should have just, just for practice, just for review. So I'm gonna add in a new letter C, which I'm gonna add for future reference. So this is going to be find D bar, S, D, and N. Well, n is really easy, so I'm going I'm to ask these questions for future, just so you know. I'll probably put them horizontally, actually, but that's all right. All right, so n is easy. There's 12, 
right? There were 12 pairings here. So that's simple, easy peasy. But how would you find D bar and SD? Well, that's review. We learned how to do that back in chapter three, which is why I want to put it in here right now, just to kind of show you that the things we learned in chapter three are still holding. So we would go stat, summary stat, columns. We would choose the differences that's after the wetsuits. And then we say we want the mean, that's what D bar is, and the standard deviation, that's what SD is. And if you want N, you can say N, but we knew N was 12. And you can see that the D bar is 0 0.0775, and the SD was 0 0.0218. And keep in mind, this would be the same unit as our values. These are maximum speeds in terms of meters per second of these swimmers. So these would both be meters per second meters per second, because that's what these are in. These are the maximum speeds of these swimmers. This one is the sample mean of the differences. This one's the sample standard deviation of the differences, right, of the Ds, because that's what these are. Those are the Ds. And this is the sample size. Okay? And just a reminder, this was sample one, this was sample two. It doesn't have to be in that order, but it was in that order based on what was written above. All right, so if I put a C in there, which I'm going to for future, then that will re-letter this page. So this will be D right here. And we're going to verify our requirements. So if we look at our requirements, it's the random dependent independent of the population normal. And again, there's that tension. It seems like dependent and independent cannot both happen, but they can. They're, di they're talking about different things. Dependent is that it's one group of swimmers, right? Independent is because that group of swimmers is less than 5% of the population. So random is yes, it's given. Dependent, we already wrote it, but we'll write it again. Dependent, sorry. <laughs> Yes, because it's one group measured twice, right, with the suit and without the suit. Right, the wetsuit that they're wearing. And then independent of the population, you would need little n to be less than 0.05 capital N. So these 12 swimmers are less than 0.05 of all competitive swimmers. And that is definitely the case. There's a lot of competitive swimmers out there in the world. So we're good, we're safe. And then the last bit would be normal. Again, we don't have a sample size that's bigger than 30, but we can see that these points are all inside those two boundary lines. So these points are linear-ish, and there's no outliers. So this is a yes, because the points on the graph are linear, mostly, <laughs> linear-ish, with no outliers. I'm going to change it so there's a little more room to write there for future.